Hey guys, what's up? How's it going? Hope you're good. As you've seen from the title of this video, I'm going to be doing a comparison between the Poco X3 NFC and the OnePlus Nord. These are two super great value smartphones. I've been using them both for a couple of months. They were both released roughly the same time earlier this year. And I basically was trying to decide which smartphone to get. And I decided these seemed to be the best value for money. I think they both punch way above their weight. They are both uh, powerful. They both have great cameras easily able to compete with flagship smartphones that are double the price the oneplus nord is slightly more expensive than the poco so bear that in mind but yeah we're going to go through the specs we're going to see which one is better to use at gaming photography design screen we're going to go through everything or if you're trying to find a great value smartphone for 2020 stay tuned because i'm going to show you exactly the difference between these two these are two very different phones from very different companies. There are quite a lot of differences between them, but let's start with one of the main ones, and that is the screen. The Poco X3 NFC features an IPS LCD display with a maximum resolution of 1080 by 2400 pixels. It has a maximum refresh rate of 120 hertz. Pixel density is 395 ppi. The OnePlus Nord features a 6.44 inch AMOLED color display with a maximum resolution of 1080 by 2400 pixels and a maximum refresh rate of 90 hertz. The pixel density is 408 ppi. So like I said, one of the main differences between these two phones is the screen. The AMOLED display in the OnePlus Nord is a completely different technology from the IPS LCD in the Poco. AMOLED displays tend to feature deeper blacks, more contrast, better colors, deeper, more saturated colors, whereas LCD displays tend to last a bit longer, tend to have slightly better battery life. Whenever the color black is displayed on an LCD display, it's not properly black, it's kind of lit from behind, so it comes across as kind of like a dark blue, which can affect some um, games or some videos or whatever you want to watch. But to be honest, guys, the difference is quite minimal. But if you are looking for the absolute best display, then I do think the OnePlus Nord does slightly clinch it with its AMOLED display, higher pixel density and higher screen to body ratio. Just looking at the overall design, there is also a considerable difference. The overall dimensions of the Poco X3 is 165 centimeters by 76.8 centimeters by 9.4 millimeters. It weighs 215 grams. It's got a waterproof rating of IP53, which means it's only splash proof. The OnePlus Nord Dimensions is 158 millimeters by 73 millimeters by 8.2 millimeters. It weighs 184 grams and it has the same waterproof rating. So the OnePlus Nord is a little bit smaller, a little bit thinner, but considerably lighter than the Poco X3 NFC. And I have found that does actually make a difference. For me, the Poco X3 just seems really, really big and bulky to hold. It does kind of stick out in your pocket if you're wearing particularly tight jeans or something like that. At least I found it just to be slightly too large for me. Some people love large phones, so if you're into that, then that is great. But for me, the size of the OnePlus Nord is more reasonable. I think it's easier to use. Both phones are pretty attractive. I think they do look more expensive than they are, particularly the Poco X3 NFC, which is the cheaper of the two. I think the design at the rear, the kind of holographic letters it has it is pretty unique um, I think the color is great the cameras look pretty awesome there the OnePlus Nord with its bright blue body is again quite unique uh, the materials seem pretty premium and I think uh, overall they both look really good there is not much there between them these are both fairly powerful phones considering their price the OnePlus Nord features a Snapdragon 732G with a maximum internal memory of 128 gigabytes and up to six gigabytes of RAM. The Poco has an external SD card slot so you can upgrade or expand that memory to pretty much whatever you want. The OnePlus Nord is powered by a Snapdragon 765G and has a maximum internal memory of 256 gigabytes and 12 gigabytes of RAM. The version that I'm using though has eight gigabytes of RAM so that is what we are comparing. The processor of the OnePlus Nord is slightly more powerful and, and in the benchmark tests that I ran, the OnePlus Nord did come out on top and pretty much every level. The Snapdragon 732G in the Poco is a new processor. It's kind of an upgraded processor to allow, I uh, guess, cheaper phones to run more powerful software, better games, and a higher resolution. In reality, the difference between the two isn't going to be massive. Um, you're still gonna be able to run the same kind of games at the same graphic quality, but perhaps more advanced apps are going to work faster on the OnePlus Nord. 
When playing games with both of these phones, I have found them both actually to be very good gaming devices. Uh, like I said, they both have fairly powerful processors and enough RAM to be able to multitask, to be able to run very uh, advanced games. You can easily play Call of Duty Mobile on the most advanced settings and it's not going to be a problem. I've never experienced any lag or anything with either of these. The largest 3D graphically intensive games run fine. Um, I think there are only a few games where they didn't allow the maximum settings on either of these phones. So for for me they both run games very quickly very smoothly where the poco x3 nfc does kind of take the lead here a little bit in terms of gaming is the size of the screen the screen is bigger the screen is um, able to show more information obviously it's uh, you're able to use it more like a gaming device without getting your thumbs and fingers in the way also the 120 hertz refresh rate allows games that are compatible with that to run at a higher refresh rate and you're going to see more um, smooth action smooth movements so while there aren't that many games that have that capability to run at 120 hertz the ones that do look amazing on the poco x3 Moving on to the photography camera capabilities of these phones, they again both punch way above their weight considering their price. The Poco X3 NFC features five cameras overall, four main cameras and one selfie camera. The main cameras feature a 64 megapixel f1.9 wide angle lens, a 13 megapixel ultra wide lens, two megapixel macro lens and a two megapixel depth sensor. For video it can record 4K at 30 frames per second as well as 1080p at 120 frames per second. The selfie camera is a single 20 megapixel lens with a maximum video resolution of 1080p at 30 frames per second. The Poco X3 NSC I think takes fairly decent photos. The lenses are not the most advanced things in the world but all of those different lenses combined together can create some really awesome shots. I've shot quite a lot of photos with this camera to test it out and overall I was pretty impressed. It does what it says on the tin. The 64 megapixel lens allows you to crop out a lot of image that you don't need and still retain the detail. Sure, it's not going to work great in low light situations and there's gonna be some noise and I guess a lack of dynamic range because it's still fairly cheap phone, fairly cheap lenses, but those four main lenses give you a lot of different options for taking selfies, for making a blurred background, for taking wide angle shots, which still look good. So unless you are downgrading from a, you know, flagship Samsung or Apple phone, you are gonna be more than happy with the camera capabilities of the Poco X3 NFC. The OnePlus Nord has a slightly different camera setup and I think slightly better camera setup overall. It features six cameras in total. The main four cameras, 48 megapixel f1.8 wide angle lens, an eight megapixel ultra wide lens, a five megapixel depth sensor, and a two megapixel macro sensor. Video can be shot at 4K at 30 frames per second, as well as 1080p up to 240 frames per second. There are two selfie cameras, a 32 megapixel wide angle lens, and an eight megapixel ultra wide lens. And interestingly, the forward-facing cameras can shoot 4K at 60 frames per second, which is quite unusual. It means you are going to be able to shoot very smooth, selfie, forward-facing video, which could be great for um, short videos, like for TikTok and Instagram, or any kind of action shots you want to take. Then that 60 frames per second makes everything look very smooth and very fluid. The main camera lenses in the OnePlus Nord, I think, are slightly more advanced, and I think the overall look of the images is slightly more realistic and slightly better, and you also have the better slow motion motion options as well. So overall, when it comes to the cameras, I do gravitate towards the OnePlus Nord. And yeah, that is basically one of the main reasons that I chose the OnePlus Nord as my main phone overall, because I got these both at the same time and I wanted to test them both out. And to be honest, I go towards the OnePlus Nord Partly because of the better cameras and secondly because of the overall more compact, easy to use design. It's not absolutely massive like the um, Poco X3. I mean, you know, there isn't a huge difference between them, but really using them every day, I did notice that the OnePlus was just an easier phone to carry around. I think if you are really into mobile gaming, if that was your main reason for choosing a phone, then maybe the Poco X3 would be slightly better just because it is much larger and that higher refresh rate, that does make a difference sometimes. Also, I must admit the Poco X3 is cheaper by a little bit, um, actually quite significant. I think it's around 70 to $80 cheaper than the OnePlus Nord. Also, I should mention this has 5G capabilities. So um, yeah, I've got that running now. I've got 5G. I don't really notice much difference to be honest, but the Poco does not have that. So if you want to kind of future-proof your connectivity, 
then the OnePlus has that option, whereas the Poco does not. So I guess the final thing to consider is battery life. Um, they're both fairly average. I think the uh, OnePlus Nord lasting a little bit longer, I can get about a day and a half out of it. And also it has a really awesome fast charging feature, which is the fastest fast charging feature I've ever had. It literally charges from zero to about 60 or 70% in 30 minutes. And that has been so useful. It comes with a special cable that allows you to do that. The Poco has, again, pretty much the same battery life, to be honest, probably just over a day on some average use. If you're going to watch some games, movies, YouTube, whatever, then it will last about a day and a half, but it doesn't have as good fast charger. On the flip side, the Poco has a, um, a microphone jack, which is awesome, which I do like, whereas the OnePlus Nord does not. It got rid of it, which is annoying because I do like to have that option. Final reason that I would recommend the OnePlus Nord is the operating system. It is way cleaner. It has way less of that extra bloatware that you get um, with some phones. I mean, Xiaomi phones tend to be cheaper, tend to be very good value for money, but they do kind of pack their phones with a lot of useless stuff, which you have to go and uninstall. So guys, I guess that's it. That is the main difference between the uh, Poco X3 NFC and the OnePlus Nord. Two great phones, to be honest, two really good phones, such good value for money. If you didn't want to spend as much, then the Poco is still a great option. I think it is one of the best value phones out there, especially for gaming. But for me, I'm going for the OnePlus Nord as um, the better of the two, better quality design, uh, better cameras, uh, better operating system, and just easier to use on a day-to-day -day basis. So for me, the OnePlus Nord takes it. I think it looks great. It's going to be my phone for uh, the foreseeable future, I think. So yeah, that's it, guys. Let me know what you think of this comparison. Which one would you choose? Do you think I made the wrong decision? Did I miss anything out? Let me know what you think. So I love to hunt for the best value smartphones and smartwatches. I really like to find the good deals out there, which phones and smartwatches are low in price, but great in quality. And I think these two can as that so if you are into that then feel free to subscribe because i'll be bringing you more reviews and comparisons in the next few months so yeah that's it guys um hope you enjoyed that stay safe stay healthy and i'll see you next time bye